So today we have this really unknown man. He, he's just kind of getting started in his career. Just started like six months ago. His name is Sam Villa, something like that. So, um, you know, he's a young guy. Please, in the chats, let's show him some love because I know he's really nervous about today. Everyone welcome Sammy Villa to the screen. Hey, Sam. How what you up? feeling? What up, AC? I'm not doing too good today, buddy. Yeah, feeling a little nervous. Ow, you know, I know yeah. this is your first time on screen. Hey, I'm excited because today we're going to talk about fire, heat. We're going to talk about that today, buddy. So I'm excited. And this could be dangerous if we're not careful. AC, good to see you, buddy. You're in a Where are you? You're in Sedona? No, I'm, I'm south of Sedona. I'm in Green Valley, Arizona. Ooh, so, ooh yeah. weather good? Oh, it's beautiful. It's nice and overcast this morning and cool. So that's why I'm out here on the porch. And, oh, good yeah, for you, brother. Getting good ready for Thanksgiving and time I with know. family. Hey, listen, gratitude to you, champ, for you being the person you are and how you continue to really, really support the industry and the hairdressers in the industry. And not only that, but as a life coach, you support human beings, man. And nobody needs mm. that more than today. Thank hey, you, Sammy. Love you, brother. Talk to you soon. And let me get started here. All right, guys, today it's all about, yeah, it's all about heat. It's about fire. It's about, wow. You see, this is important. Heat is important. So before I talk about this, where are you from? I've been seeing from, I got Huntsville, Alabama, T-Spa, you're on the line. What's up, Angela? I see that we're excited because I got Oregon. Who else do I have on here? I've got Oregon, New Jersey. New Jersey, you were on there first. Kudos to you, but keep typing where you're from. So yeah, I'm fired up, as Katie said. Yeah, I'm fired up because today we're going to talk about heat, a particular pool, a tool that's really, really important and in and, and tool. <laughs> AC, uh, you know, lighters, okay? So the idea is heat is very valuable to us. I'm going to put this in front of me, but not burn myself, okay? <laughs> People's going, look out, Utah. What's up, Stacy? Uh, so uh, heat's important, but it can also be very dangerous if we're not careful. So it's how we can control our heat and how you work with heat is so, so critical. But heat's valuable to us in our industry. But how you control that is critical and then how we use our tools. Today, I'm going to talk about one particular tool, and that's a flat iron. Flat irons and thermal tools are picked up more than ever before. Curling irons and flat irons. But the way that we're using them are not so much traditional ways in terms of we might think of using a flat iron or using a curling iron. Today, primarily, we're going to focus on a flat iron. So the first thing I want to talk about is I'm going to talk about the flat iron. Let's just talk about what. I want to go the what, how, why, and then I've got about 10, 12 cool little tricks that I'm going to share with you. And a couple I guarantee you haven't seen before. All right, so let's talk about it. Right now I'm holding the Sanvia Sleeker, and this is the Ruby Red. It's Christmas. Come on, guys. Black Friday, red, ruby red. So occasionally you're going to see us do unlimited editions. Now, with our sleeker iron, what really makes this unique is the fact that when you take a look at the sleeker, guys, let's take a look at this. i got to maneuver around here in this little studio. But when you look at the sleeker, this sleeker, I particularly want you to look at the plates. And it's the plates that are really interesting because these plates here, they're flexible. So they're flexible, and there's a reason why they're flexible. And what the flexible does is it allows you guys to eliminate the snagging and it allows you to get this even compression. And that's why they're flexible. Then the second thing I want you to look at really closely is look at the edges. The edges are not so rectangle, okay, but they're more beveled on the edges. And the rounded edges, this will help also to eliminate that, that, that whole idea of snagging, but it also eliminates what we tend to get a lot in flat irons is lines. So these plates are pretty unique in the way that they're made, guys. Now, what really makes this is you've got this ceramic heating element. So the ceramic heating element inside here is just going to create even distribution of heat. Okay, that's important. Then this is cool right here. This is your shutoff. Okay. So what's cool about this here is that it automatically shuts off in 60 minutes. So if you don't touch it, it's going to shut off. Now, there's a reason why I did this salon owner. I remember all the time my staff and myself included would leave our hot tools on accidentally and not turn them off. So that's what's cool. After 60 minutes, it, acts, it automatically shuts off. Then the other thing that's cool here, when you look at this, let's just talk about this. You've got your off. Let's go to low. Now, when you go to low, you'll see more of a yellow. It'll start to blink. And then when it stops blinking, boom, you're at your heat. 
And when you take a look at the heat at low, you'll see it green. It's 375 for fine hair. Okay. So you really need to know that. All right. Now, the next thing is, is this is what's so cool. There's color treated. Okay. You'll see it say color treated. Now, so important you understand if you go over 392 degrees of temperature after you've done a really nice color fresh, you start to affect those color molecules. They don't attach. Now your color starts to fade. So really professionally recommended, don't go over 392. Make sure you know what your temperatures are, what your low setting is. Low setting here for the sleeker is 375. The color treated is 392. And this is for most hair uh, textures, especially color treated. That's why it's there. Okay. And then high, if I go shift over to high, Andrew, high is 410. At Samvia, we really believe that 450 is not necessary in this industry. So that's really important to, uh, to uh, really uh, note that, that that's not necessary, 450. 410 is maximum. I'm going to talk about that in terms of using it. Uh, uh, Carol, Carol Lee, thanks for a genius, but we're not a genius. That actually, thanks, Carol Lee. That actually came from um, Dr. David Cannell at Redken. He said, Sam, take the medium out, and I want you to be the messenger and teach people, put color treated on there, Eliminate the word medium and teach them that if they go over 392, they're affecting color molecules. So I thought that was really, really important in that. So that's the features of this particular iron. But no, the reason I want to give you that is know the iron that you're holding in your hand. What is the best way to work with it? All right. So let's talk about that. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go right into some hair. And I want to talk about some, some what's, some simple do's and don'ts. And this is in one of our, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do that now for me. Go to YouTube. If you're on YouTube, just click the subscribe button. Uh, you're there. You're going to find a great video by Andrew Carruthers who put it together a video on the do's and don'ts. And I just want to go over a couple things. And sectioning is critical. You know, the, the, the type of there he is, buddy. The type of sectioning that you take is critical. So we've talked about what we're working with. Now let's go into this how in terms of, of, of things that are you're just going to, it's these details, guys, that really make things effective and work. So I want you to pay close attention. Now I'm going to show you some really cool stuff. All right. All right. Here we go. Now, choice. You can work with a large comb or you can work with a long comb or a show, short comb. Black or white, depending upon the color you're working with, really help to tell you the angle of the, the iron in terms of how you're placing it in. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a regular cutting comb. I'm going to work with a long one. Now, let's talk about sectioning. Look at this sectioning here, okay? That sectioning right now is just too thick. And the reason being is too thick is because the heat concentration and focus of heat will be primarily on the top and primarily underneath. You're really getting just a medium focus of heat in that center. Number two, when we go in and we do this, you start to crease that underneath. You know, see if I went to close, I just start to crease that. So what we want to want to do is for consistency, what we recommend is take small sections. Okay, that's important. So if I went to do this, you can see now what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself passing through this 10, 15 times just so you get maximum heat. Okay. So the other thing is this horizontal sections, horizontal sections. When you tend to do work with horizontal sections, you're not really working with the shape of the head. And what happens is things tend, tend to get a little bit bulky in areas. And you can still get things bulky, but you're going to have a lot more control. We'll look at the size of my section, small. And then you're going to have a lot more control if we work with diagonal sections. Okay, now watch how I'm going to place my iron in. I'm going to place the comb in, and then what's going to happen is the iron's going to come right back after that. Now, as I'm here, look at the iron chase the comb. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because if I didn't use the comb and the hair has a crinkle, what I want you to understand is you're actually creasing in that crinkle that's in the hair. So you need to really understand using a comb. Let me give you a strong example. Watch this. Okay, watch this, AC. Okay, let's take textured hair, for example. All right. Here's some textured hair. Okay. Now for this type, what, I, you know, it's chasing that comb. Remember I just said, I want to make sure there's no crinkles in there because if I don't use a comb, I just pick up a section of flat iron over it, whatever it is, that's what you're going to stabilize. That's what you're going to crease in. Okay. Now here's some texture here. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a small section okay, and we're talking about using a comb. Okay. But this, in this particular case, I want more tension. I want more tension. Now, the first thing we need to know is product is not, not an option, it's a necessity. So I'm going to work with Redken's Iron Shape 11, a thermal heat protector. 
Okay, this is important. So I'm going to use this to protect that heat, protect that shaft. Okay. Once I have that, then I want you to come through. And instead of using a comb, I want you to pick up an artist series finishing brush. Okay. And I picked it up. It's small, small one. I'm not picking up the signature series because I want a small, smaller base. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. Okay. Also, the reason I'm picking up a brush is I'm going to get more tension, more pull, more tension than I would with a comb. And then with this particular texture, that's what we need. Okay, so understand the tools. We talked about the comb, but when am I going to pick up a brush? Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've got my product through. Now I'm going to comb through. I'm going to brush this through. And look, see, I'm just stretching that out. So I want to stretch that out because that's the state that I want. So how do I maintain the state? If I used to comb, it wouldn't work. Okay, now make sure you apply some questions in there. If you're learning so far, why don't you put in learn? Okay, now watch this. This technique actually comes from Al Campbell, a San Via ambassador and a Mazzani artist. And he did this technique in Chicago at the AB show, ABS show. And I was just amazed, but he was using a bigger one because he had more length. So use the finishing brush, brush from the signature series when you have more length of hair. Here, I'm going to turn it vertically, but watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab down here. See, I'm grabbing here. And now I'm just going to arc the brush and pull. So I'm going to chase the flat iron with this brush. Now, if I want more tension and I have this shorter degree of length, now instead of going vertical with the brush to the hair, I'm going to go in horizontal. See how that gives me more hair, more tension. I can use my thumb. When it's longer, I can place the brush in vertically to that section and the hair is out here. Now my hand will go over the handle and now I can really stretch. Now, allow me to demo. Okay, so there's the brush going in. I brush through this. Look, I brush through that. Okay, I brush and stretch, brush and stretch. Constantly, constantly, you know, one of the things I've learned on this is hydrating. Okay, now see, I've gone through and I've done that. Now I'm going to pick up the iron. And when I pick up the iron, watch the iron. Now I'm going to just chase that hair with the iron. See, I just come in and I'm just going to just give a couple passes. And now watch me place the iron just on that rim of the brush, on the base of the bamboo brush. Bamboo. Environmentally, environmentally sustainable. So that's what you're going to see with our brushes, our bamboo. Now look how I was able to get that nice and smooth with one pass. So one of the key things that we speak at at San Villa is slow down to speed up. You want to slow down to speed up. If you learn something, say yes. Okay, Jenny, yes, it makes so much sense, doesn't it? It's really important. Let's do another section here for you, okay? So I'm going to do another section. Now watch what I'm going to do. Same thing, guys, apply that we just talked about. Small section. So I'm just going to take a small section. See, if I take lar larger sections, you're passing, you're passing more muscle memory. So slow down to speed up. Don't think, well, Sam, because I'm taking so many sections, it's going to take me forever. No, guys, it's not going to take you forever. I'd rather slow down and speed up, get it right the first time, rather than continually going back and redoing and redoing. Okay, let's do it again. All right. Kudos once again. Uh, Katie, if we can't get Al Campbell's handle up on there, on the chat box, I want everybody to follow Al. Al is awesome. Now, once again, I need my thermal heat protector. I'm going to apply my Iron Shape 11. And I'm going uh, pretty tight with this, Andrew, because I want, I want that on there. Okay? And then I'm going to brush it through. Remember, I want to brush that through, and I want to stretch. Any questions, make sure that you ask, guys. All right? So, look, see, I brushed that through, and I stretch. Now, watch how I'm going to come in horizontal. Because of the length, now I'm going to place my thumb here, and then my iron is going to place, this is the flat iron, it's going to be placed right on the brush. So now I'm pushing, letting the pu iron push the brush. Okay, so watch. Let's demo. Okay, so here, horizontal versus vertical. Iron, okay, slide. Now I got my thumb there. Good, nice and tight. Now slide, okay, and just small compresses first. So I'm just going to go in with small compresses first. Now I'm ready to slide. Now watch the, the iron. Look how it pushes that brush. I just push. Okay. And now I'm just going to slide out. And with those bristles, I get that maximum tension. If it was a comb, because of all the bristles, it gives me more tension. If it was a comb, it'd be a little smooth, but I'd be probably passing back a couple times. Look at that. That's just one pass. Okay. Now, if you learn something there, right, learn. Andrew, how are we doing? Good. I think this is a great question from our friend Juman. Um, with stretching and heat, will it not break the bands of curly hair? 
uh, Juman, if you're using the right, right product, thermal heat protection. Now, let me give you this. Okay. If you feel, okay, fine hair, fine hair. When I flat iron fine hair, I'm going to put it on low. Color treated. I'm going to put it on medium. High. I'm going to use that for coarse hair. Now, if I felt that this coarse hair, I was going to get breakage. Okay. Then what I would do is probably drop it down to medium. But what I want you to do is be aware of the tension. Yes. Could you be, if you're not careful, could you get uh, breakage? Yes, you could, but be aware. What's the texture? What's the hair you're working with? Highly decolorized hair. If you comb through and it starts to break, I probably wouldn't recommend this. So you be the professional, Juman. Just control that temperature of heat. I hope this, this helps you out. Susie, no puedo hablar español muy bueno cuando está escuchando y todo. Es muy importante que, uh, es, um, que le voy a platicar en inglés porque... Voy a hablar con mis manos y mis dedos y mi corazón. Si habla en español, tú no, no, no entiende. Lo siento, mija. Gracias. Sorry about that, guys. I want, she wanted to speak in Spanish. My Spanish is broken. It's not very good. When I teach, if I teach you in Spanish, you're not going to learn anything. So uh, definitely that's something, Andrew, we need to take a, take a note. And someday I want to do a Spanish live, get one of our artists on here, one of our ambassadors, and we'll do a Spanish live for you. Okay. All right. So now this is what's great. Now watch. Let's go back to this one little spot right there, right there. I'm going to go back to that spot. So let's come through, take a section. Now watch. Look how slice, small that slice is. And then I want you again to notice we highly recommend you flat iron on the diagonal. You're going to get a much more natural collapse of that hair when it comes through. Once again, the Artist Series styling brush coming through, not a comb because of the texture I'm working with. And I'm gonna come through stretch. I'm going to place in that iron. I have my iron shape 11 from Reckon on there. And now look how the iron will chase and push the brush in this particular case. I push the brush. My compression is really important. What do you mean by compression? Compression is how much you squeeze it. Now look, learn this. Okay, fine hair, my hand is farther away from the iron and I'm on low. I don't need that much compression with fine hair, guys. Smaller diameter, diameter, small sections. Medium hair, texture of hair, my hand goes more to the middle. Okay, if I have textured, highly textured hair and I want high compression, my hand goes closer to the plates, but not over it because these plates are made so this is hot. And you're going to see me do some more techniques so, to give you some curling techniques. But you see, I maneuver my hand based upon compression of the iron. Something to really, really note. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Las Clases. Ah, that a girl, Katie. <laughs> Katie, you're awesome. All right. So that's really flat iron when you're going to go through and you're going to work with textured hair. I've discovered, guys, that this is a great way in which to do it. Going in and doing it this way. And once again, this particular technique, working with your your finishing brush, this comes from Al Campbell. And make sure we got Al Campbell's up there, okay? So we've talked about the what, the how, the why of the iron. I've given you an idea behind the comb and a brush. Which tool would you use? Now take a look at this. Let's go to another one, okay? Just simple things that we're doing here right now, okay? So let's go here. And let's just take a look at a bob, okay? A lot of times what happens is we'll come through and we want to flat iron a bob. That Pat Manica stand needs to be set in cement for this. Yes, surely it does, doesn't it? Yeah, you know what, though? Make sure that that's what you have to understand. Let the client know, listen, you, I need tension, so I'm really going to be putting, putting pressure on this. I'm going to be really pulling on this. But communicate with the client. But remember, one of the key things with that texture is you need tension, my dear. You need tension. And I really believe that people, based upon their hair, the more texture they have, the more they're used to that in terms of that tension and that pulling. But I agree with you. Cement would definitely help. All right, now, in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a different tool. I'm going to pick up a round brush. So now there's times when I'll go in and I will flat iron for bevel. So now let's talk flat iron for bevel. When we flat iron for bevel, what you want is you want the motion of the flat iron to be a C-shape. So it's a C-shape. So I want you to continue thinking. Watch the motion of the flat iron. When I want hair straight, my motion with the flat iron is straight up and down when we want hair straight, okay? The elevation, how you elevate this hair will impact the silhouette of your found, of your uh, flat iron. So we have to be aware. So it's not just a matter of picking up sections. It's a matter of picking up the proper sections, the amount of hair per section, the speed of your pass is critical. The motion of that. 
So now, Sam, how do I get a C? If I'm a client and I'm teaching a client how to do this, let me position myself here, Andrew. And my client, I'm teaching the client to hold that flyer. Now just lock your, your elbow. Let me move this girl out of the way. Lock your elbow. Lock that elbow. I'm telling, teaching the client. Lock the elbow. Now just drop your hand. See that? So look how I'm here. Now watch me just take this section out. I got the flat iron here. Now watch how I'll just take that section. And now watch me just lock my elbow. And now I just go to a C. Did you see that? It immediately drops to a C. So now that's educating the client. So it's not only important that you learn how to do this, educate the client. Because see, the last thing that we're looking for right now, the last thing that we're looking for is straight hair. There's so much movement going on. And we'll talk about that with technique in a moment. Give you some, some cool little techniques. All right. So I'm going to take a diagonal section. Look at that diagonal section. And now this time my tool is going to be the round brush. So now I'm going to come through. I'm going to take the round brush, take a diagonal slice, okay, and a small slice. I don't want a big slice, okay, there, look at the size of that section, not too big, okay, so if you really saw that, look at that, see, it's not big at all, now watch, there's a round brush, now watch me use this just, now here I'm going to pass a couple times, see, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for movement, now watch me just do this, and now watch the, the bevel I got out of that section by working with a round brush. So a round brush is really a great tool to work with a flat iron. Let's do another section. I'm just going to take another diagonal slice. Okay. And I'm going to come through. Now watch my pass. My pass is slow, guys. Watch how I'll pass. Look at the C. Now watch the round brush come underneath and I'll pass one more time. And the round brush goes back underneath. See that? Look how I placed those ends over the brush. Now roll because I allow it to cool. Now I, I'm getting that strong bevel. Look at that side already. So now that's with a curling arm. Oh, I can share this. I have clients that like to pull out and drop down. And it's breaking their hair. This is a fabulous way to. Yes, surely you got it. That's great. Just teach them to do a C. Just this. That's all they are doing is that, a C. It's great, okay? All right, questions. Are you guys, if you're learning, say, just give me a learn. Just need some feedback in there. All right, now we've talked about a comb. We've talked about a round brush, giving you those ideas. Let's go now and let's do some tricks. And let me just show you a couple cool little tricks in terms of this and things that are working for me. All right, so first thing I want to show you is I want to go in and I want to do a wave effect with this. And there's so many ways to do a wave. I'm going to give you a couple, all right? Angela, great. All right. I want to give you a couple, all right? Angela's learning. Great. Juman, yes. Thank you, Juman. If you're learning something so far, just type learn into the chat box. If you've got some questions, if you've got some uh, 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 comments, type those in this chat box. All right, now let's go for a wave effect here. Once again, look at the size of that section. Did you see the size of that section? I don't want that size. I'm going to go down to that size. All right, maybe just a tad more. So I think an index finger is really a good size to go for, all right? Just to kind of, if you're wondering, well, Sam, how big is that? How thick is that section? All right, so now I'm going to take that away. All right, now, iron shape 11, okay? So I'm going to miss that on. This is my thermal heat protector from Redken. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to work with a tail comb, okay? And you'll see why here in this particular case. I'm going to pick up the sleeker, okay? Now, I'm going to elevate this diagonal forward, all right? Let me give you a view of that AC, okay? I'm going to elevate this diagonal forward. I'm going to come in with an iron, and I'm just going to compress that going forward. See, heat, once again, heat. It really breaks down the molecules of the hair and it gets the hair doing what you want it to do. Okay. Now you can just see how that tilts a little bit moving that direction. Once I've done that, now I'm going to come through with a comb and now I'm going to come through and I'm going to take the section, release the comb, take your hand. I come through and look at me just roll that section. Okay. Now once I roll that section, I'm going to turn her towards you. Can I see the comb? I'm going to use the comb and now watch how I'm going to come through. And now I'm going to roll the opposite way. Now watch me use the comb, float it. Look how you push that hair. I float it that direction. Okay, I roll here using my hand. Okay, now watch me elevate up. And now watch me come back down. I'm going to roll again. So all I'm doing is I'm rolling. Look at the wave. Okay, I'm rolling one direction and another direction. Okay. 
I use my comb. I place it there. Look how I create the crease. Okay. Now, next one, I'm going to go back. So now watch me pull. I roll. I count to about three, guys, and then I'll do it another direction. Okay. And now I come through. And this is going to give me what I've discovered, Andrew, by doing it this way. It gives me a little bit more of an organic wave. I'm not looking for something that's really, really uh, like I might get with a curling iron, let's say. That's just so, so perfect in that. Okay. Now watch. Look how I just get this, this wave. Now watch. What I love about this is I'll get that, but then I get this curl. Okay. Let's do another section. This is what's so cool about this. Okay. Let's isolate this section, make it smaller. Okay. So it's not so much like I'm looking so much for a wave. Now watch again. I'm going to elevate up. I'm going to go forward. Okay, I'm going to come through. Now, all I want to do is roll. Okay, so I roll. Now I'm going to come through. I'm going to slide the comb in, go that direction, and I'm going to keep that crease. Okay, now watch me continue. Watch here. And I've got the iron up against the comb, not on her. Now I'm going to come through. I come, continue to come out. One, two, three. Now comb, go the opposite way. And I turn the iron the opposite way. Okay. Watch again, watch again, here. Allow the heat to work for you, go slow, here. Okay, now use the comb, come back opposite way. Now watch me get the curl, okay. So now here's what I want you to get. Look how I got some movement out of that instead of me just getting curl. So it's a combination of getting a wave and a curl, okay. If you learn something, give it to me. Just type it in there, all right. So it's it's what's that's what's so cool about this in terms of the way that you move it. I'm use what's making this work for me is the tail comb. What's making this work for me is the idea of me pushing back into it to get this effect. Okay, take another section. Okay, and let's go in. Same thing. Okay, my thermal heat protector. Sometimes you can get so excited, guys. Remember, this is not a product. This is not an option. It is a necessity. Okay, now watch how I'm going to come back in. I'm going to place my iron in. In this particular case, I'm going horizontal with it. Okay, here we go here. And that's just because I'm looking for curl. I'm not flat ironing for straight or, not, or so much, anything else. Okay, now I'm going to go here. Now, most cases, people go the opposite way with a flat iron. Notice this. With this technique, I don't have to turn the flat iron the opposite way. I continue to roll the flat iron is what I'm trying to say. Okay, now watch again here. Take that wave the opposite way. See, I just bend the comb. See the comb? See, I just bend that the opposite way. Okay, let's go again. One, two, three. Now I'm going to push back. And now allow the heat to work. And now curl. Okay. And look, look at the, that expansion. Look at how it's, it has a sense to me, just this little bit of more organic sense to it. Let's just go through that. You see how it's just kind of just has a little bit more impact down here in terms of moving this. And here's the discovery. I hope you're getting out of this. Forward, that gives me that wave. Then it gives me that explosion of curl at the end. If you want to see it one more time, just say yes. Okay. Glad you're loving it, Angela. Okay. Questions. Okay. Let's go one more time with this one, AC. This one's pretty cool, guys. It just gives you that combination of things. In terms of what you see, what I'm trying to do is just kind of I'm going to visit a little bit of the past of what we've done. But I'm just going to give you a couple of new things here in terms of what I've discovered. OK, that section is a little bit too big for me. I'm going to narrow that section down. When I work with these kinds of concepts, I like working with a tail comb just gives me a little bit more control with my section. OK. Some people say to me when I do this and I show this, they'll say that almost looks like a roller set. Yeah, it can. You know, how big roller and then a roller because of the. The first wrap of a roller, sometimes that has a little bit more, uh, that has more curl than the base up here. You get a little bit more volume or movement out of that, okay, or wave. Okay, here we go. Turn. See, I roll it under, okay. Hold that. Okay, once I'm here, now watch me straighten out. Look at the flat iron straight. Now watch me come and one, two, three, roll. Now there's that way. Push. You see it? Push. Okay, now here we go. Watch again. I just bring it straight out. I roll under one, 
two, three. Now push the opposite way. See, I pushed that comb. That I kind of let it going back now. It's going back. Okay, here we go again. Look how I just come out. See, I like motorcycle wave. It's this. Look how I just go under. One, two, three. Now I'm going to push forward. So got to remember, where do you push? I pushed forward, push back, push forward. Now I'm going to go for the curl. And look what I get. Okay, now let's go through and watch this. And let's just go through with our hands. Okay, look at that movement that I got. And once again, I think it's multi-textured finishing. I'm not looking so much, if I want that wave a little more, I'm not looking so much for uh, quaffed right now. I'm looking for a little bit more of these organic type finishes. That's what I want to see. So I'm just going to go back in. Watch, I'll use my comb and I'll just compress the wave just a little bit more. Okay. See, I just compressed this one little piece right here. Let me get a profile, Andrew. Yeah, you can just see that. So now this has a little bit more explosion. It's got that wave. Uh, it's just going through. And once again, just learning how to work with the, the mechanics of things a little bit differently. Okay, let's jump over to this side now. Now over here, what I want to show you is I'm going to stay on the same side over here so that my arm stays open to you and you can see what I'm doing. Now, what I want to do now is I want to go through and I want to show you how to do just a simple, a simple tricks with it. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of get into some other little things that are different. Okay, so let's just take a section and let's just go back with that section. Any questions so far, Andrew? How are we doing? Doing good. Okay. Um, I think you've kind of hit all the questions and like you're... You're just doing such a great job of teaching them that there aren't any questions. All right. Let's keep going then, brother. All right. So let's do some things that, that yeah, maybe you already know, but let's just talk about it. Maybe somebody doesn't know these things in. Yeah, surely that last look was a little bit more of a lived in, but it had that little combination of the wave and the curl. Hope you guys got that out of that whole technique. Okay, let's go into some. So a lot of times these things are, why would I need to know these things? Well, I would suggest you teach these things to your clients because especially those, those guests that travel. Okay, that way they're traveling with just one thing. They can choose to straighten their hair or they can choose to curl their hair. Now with this one, you can curl because on the top of the plates here, it gets hot on the outside. So be careful with that. And there's a reason why we did that. So now that's diagonal. Now let's talk about a, a couple of different things. Watch how I'm going to take the iron in diagonally and I want to move this back diagonal. I want this to move away from the face. Okay. So I'm just going to come, I'm going to stay on this side. My hand's going to come underneath because I want you to see this. Now, here's a mistake I'm making right now. I'm not combing through this and there are some crinkles right there. If you don't comb through it, what happens is that's going to get crinkled exactly flat iron the way it is with the little crinkles in it. When you brush through it, now it's going to get frizzy and you're wondering why. Okay. That's a discovery that I've had based on the habits that I have sometimes not following through consistently within every section combing through. Okay. Now, once I'm here, watch, I'm just going to use the iron and I would be standing on that side, but I want you to see, okay, here. And all I want to do is I'm just going to come out and watch how I'm going to, I'm going to stand over here, Andrew. I'll, I'll make it where they can see. All right. So here like this. Yes. Okay. Now watch. So what I'm doing is I want this hair to move away from the face. So look how I'm going to get this to just move away just by the way that I'm rotating my iron. And look how I'm just coming out. Now watch how I'm going to get that to move away. Oh, let me turn her around. You see that, guys? Now that's what we're seeing a lot today. Okay, and now that was real simple. Diagonal section and it's working. Okay, now let's go another one over here. Now let's take this and now you can have the choice here, guys. Now let's take a diagonal back section and let's move this one forward, okay? So same thing that I just did, okay? Thermal heat protector, okay? Coming through now, combing through. And I'm gonna drop my elevation this time, okay? So now that elevation was pretty high. Let's drop the elevation. I want you to see how you elevate these things it affects the placement, especially the volume at the base, okay? Now I'm going to take the iron in. I'm going to open up my iron just so you can see. Now, instead of me moving, instead of me moving back, watch how I will now move things forward. Now, 
and I've dropped the elevation. And now you can see how this one has a tendency to move forward. This one has a tendency to move back. This one, you release my iron. Good, I want the end straight. Look, watch, I can curl these ends if I want with a flat iron to have more definition, or I can leave them straight. I think in the world today, we're actually going in and we're actually leaving these pretty straight. So now we could do this, okay? Now, I want something a little bit more organic, let's say. I want something more, not so um, uh, curled, all right? I want something a little bit more organic, all right? So now you could come in. Let's take a section and watch how I'm going to take the iron. And watch how I'm just going to twist with this. So look how it stays flat. Now watch me twist. Look how that section... Ah, Watch, watch how this section, I keep it flat. Now watch me bring, just like a curling iron, underneath and around, slide, underneath and around. This is what we do with our curling irons now. Now I challenge you, do it with a flat iron. Now watch, when I move this out, I left those ends a little straighter. When I go through and I do this, this one, this has a little bit more of an organic kind of feel to it. See that? You can just see how that has more of an organic type of sense to it in terms of how that particular curl looks. Let me give you a view of it here on a different type of background. All right. Look at this. Look at this curl. OK. See how that's much more organic. OK. Now take a look at this curl. This is the one we just did. And look at that. It's moving forward. OK. One before. This is the one we did. And it's moving back. Okay, and now this was a twist. So I, all I did was just twist it, just like you do with your flat iron. Let's do that one again. Okay, diagonal back sections, just what I'm working with. Okay. Let's take a small section so you can see it. There it is here. Okay, now watch. I'm just going to take a section. Take, think of it. You want to keep this flat. You want to keep that flat. Okay, thermal heat protector combing through. Okay, think about which way do I want this to move? Do I want it to move back? Do I want to move forward? That determines which way you're going to turn the iron. So let's take the iron. This time I'm going to go, I'm going to go back. Okay, now watch here. Now watch me come underneath towards the head. Okay, watch me come here, underneath, here, underneath, here, underneath, and then float out okay so now let's look at that that is much more coiled and twisted but what's interesting about this is when we go through and we finger this it's much more organic it's much more natural out of this so now this would be the same thing as if i went through and i braided it andrew you're going to get this effect and this is a lot easier than me taking that time and going through and braiding because if you with braids, you just braid it, you get this wave, real organic, same type of process. All right, let's go back. Let's look at what we created. This Sammy. Was, yes, buddy. Uh, Shirley's asking, if you weren't teaching this and on a time limit, would you let those curls cool more? Yes. Yes. Thank you for asking, Shirley. One of the things I wouldn't do is I wouldn't be fingering through these so, so quickly. Three things about thermal tools that we, three principles that we need to be aware of. Heat, tension, and cooling. It doesn't matter if you're working with this tool or if you're working with a Marcel or a, um, um, oh, I forgot. Anyway, irons. Are <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Heat, tension, and cooling are critical. All right. So you have to be a member. The one that we bypass or I tend to bypass a lot is cooling. I don't allow things to cool enough. So heat, tension, and cooling. Focus on cooling. So, Shirley, totally agree with you. If I was not teaching these things, I want you to see the end result of these things as I'm teaching them. So that's why I'm going through and kind of pulling on these things. And just so you can see how they respond and what they do. But cooling is so critical, Andrew. Sometimes, I don't know about you, buddy, but I get so much in a hurry in the salon that I would just be going one after another after another in terms of, you know, going through and, and wind up, see the end result immediately and then by the desire of wanting to see the end result immediately, it didn't give me the result because I was there fingering and floating and tickling things and spending a lot of time doing that. Let things cool, basically, is what I'm saying. All right, let's go to another one now. Let's take a section, okay? All right, 
Now, what I want to create here is I want to create more of a wave. So now watch how what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through. I'll jump on this side so that you can see it. So let's put a wave on this particular section. All right. And let's do this so you can see it immediately. All right. Here. <clears throat> All right, now this is easy to do. This is something that I'm sure you've seen, but let's just talk about some things about it in regards to that, all right? Maybe there's some little tip in here that you're gonna get out of this. So what I wanna make here is I wanna do a push wave and I wanna work with a, a flat iron rather than a curling iron. You could simply, you could easily do this with a curling iron, but I like with a flat wave. You know, a flat wave is gonna give me, once again, sometimes working with a flat iron versus a curling iron, Andrew, you get a little bit more organic sense of things. And if you, if people ask me, where do you think the trend is going? I think the trend is going to that organic sense. People are gonna to start to embrace their natural movement. Now watch how I'm just gonna go through. Look how I just come through, okay? And look how I'll fold, okay? And look how I'll just come through and I'll compress and look how I tap and I'll fold. Okay, and once I fold, watch how I'll, I, I, I'm holding this up against gravity, so I'm not pulling on this, okay, so now I come through, now watch me, look how I just lightly push, see I just do this, see how that's pushing that hair inside to an S shape, once I'm there, fold, and now look how I, my left hand is over directing this section forward, so I'm taking this hair here, and I'm just bringing it forward, setting it up for the next movement. Because I want, think of it S, think of it as the S. That's the top part of that S, okay? Now, look how I'll clamp. Now, watch how I'll just push, push, push. Okay, now watch me rotate. Now, here's the key thing. Look at me pull this hair this direction. And I'm doing it very lightly. I'm not pulling with tension in this particular case. Why? Because I want that sense of looseness, okay? Now, there you'll see an S wave. And S wave is real simple, guys, in regards to doing that. But it's just really, and I, what I recommend, Andrew, is take random sections. You know, don't take such, you know, sections because when I'm done and you go through this, you want it to look that sense of really organic. So let's take another section. All right, we'll do it again. So now here's what I, I want to say I'm not concerned if this undulation matches that undulation. Okay. I think sometimes. When you want something to have an organic sense, listen to what Sammy's about to say. If you want something to have an organic sense, loosen up that mindset. You've got to loosen that up, okay? Coming through, thermal heat protector, comb. Now, flat iron. Now, watch right away. I'm not going to pass the iron through. I immediately just lightly place it on that. Let's put that clip back up here so you can see this. Okay. Okay, here, take the section. All right, I'll start the same way I did, but I am so loose on this in terms of, does it have to match per perfectly? No. You know, that to me, Andrew, is how you get this sense of organic. You gotta change your mindset. So finishing is all about your eye. You know, you're developing your eye. Your hands create what your mind's eye sees. So hair is a fiber with an attitude that's waiting to be changed. But it's your hands and how you use your tools that alters this fiber in terms of how it's changed. So really be aware of that, guys, in terms of that. I think what separates, Andrew, good hairdressers from the great hairdressers, it's not usually specific technical skills, but it's visual skills. It's the visual skills that, then those, those visual perceptive skills that make a hairdresser great. So really work on technique, but you know, really now it's about me developing my eye in a different way and seeing things in a different way and seeing things a little bit more organic. I hope that makes sense, guys. If you're with me, just type a yes on that. All right, now watch. Okay, and look how I just, once again, just very organic in that type of way of what you're seeing. Now let's go and let's do something a little bit different. Let's think of about a pen curl, the concept of a pen curl, okay? So let's put this one away, all right? And let's go through and get another section, okay? And let's bring this section here. And now watch what I'm gonna do. Now I want something that has a little bit, that, that same thing, Not again, another trick to get something to look something a little bit more organic, okay? 
heat protector, lock in. All right, ready to go. Now, I'm going to give you a kind of a back view of this, Andrew, because I want you to see how I'm placing my iron in right there. So I'll move this clip down a little bit more. There we go. Okay. This is pretty cool. This is something that I think is like, it's just a cool way to get some, some curl out of this. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to do just what I did. All I want to do is just start dropping hair into the iron. So I'm going to hold the iron about a quarter inch from the scalp. Now watch what I'm going to do. I make a C shape, one direction forward. Look at the, that, that section. Look how it's full. I let it fall inside that direction. Now I, I freeze there. I push the hair this direction. See it? I'll move myself out of the way. There you can see it. Now let that hair stay in there. So I'm letting that hair stay in the flat iron. Whatever come push I push out comes out. I go opposite direction. So all I'm doing is see that direction. I push in a C the opposite direction there. I let that collapse in the iron. There I've got it in. Now I go opposite direction. See that? I let that go into the iron. Opposite direction. Opposite direction. And I'm very, once again, casual of that about that. So you get this. Now, here's the difference. This gives me a little bit more sense of volume, as you can see, at that scalp. Look at that. Can you see here? Uh, uh, where am I? Over here, right there. You can see how I'm getting a little bit more volume right there at that scalp. Let's do it one again. All right. But I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to use my tools in different ways. And the reason I'm going to use the tools in different ways is because I want to challenge myself to do things in a different way. There's danger in the comfort zone. I want you to have one foot in it. Those are the things that you know. Those are the things that you do on a regular basis. Then I want you to keep one foot out of your comfort zone. And that's the foot that's actually that you're using to challenge yourself. I think those things are important in today's world. Let's do another one. I'm going to do another one. Let's keep that same one there so you can see. Okay, so here's another one. Okay, let's do the same thing. Um, what do you call this, Sam? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, guys. You call it whatever you want, you know. But the idea is think different ways of using the flat iron. Here we go right here. Watch how I'm just going to think C. Now watch me go C one direction. Let's see how I got it in there. Okay, I'll keep myself out of the way. Okay, now there I'm going to just relax. Okay, now watch how I'll compress at that C. And now I bring the hair the opposite direction. Okay, now watch me go in, watch me make a C, look at that, it right down, might look like a U to you. Now watch me just let push this shape into the flat iron, see that? Now watch me go opposite direction, opposite direction, I push that in. And see how I just tap? Now I go in, let's shape it opposite way, this way, and push in. You get the whole thing in, you stop. Okay, now let that go, and see how you just, I mean, to me, this is what I love doing, it's just, Give me different textures and working with the tools to get these different textures. And there you go. Once again, just another sense of organic type of texture and working with that. All right. If you learned something so far on one particular thing, just let me know. Just let me know. Okay. Let's eliminate this one. Let's go to this side. And now let me show you simple, simple little things, you know, simple little things. All right. Let's place it here and here. All right. Now watch. Let's just go get a section. Okay, I'm just going to get a slice of hair. All right, and watch how what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to take this and I'm going to pin curl it. So I'm going to use the flat iron to give me the pin curl. Okay, so let's lock her in. Okay. All right, now watch. A simple, simple pin curl in terms of what we've done over the years. I'm just going to use a flat iron. I'm sure you've seen people, they'll use chopsticks, or in the past, we used hairpins to create a Z type of shape to it. Just interweaving figure eight over a hairpin. Uh, same thing with a chopstick, just wrapping and twisting the hair over a chopstick gives you a really different sense. Same thing here. Watch what I'm going to do. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a pin curl. So I'm just going to go back to the days that I made a pin curl. Okay. Then I'm just going to take that out, hold on to that pin curl, bring it back up, and now hit that with the flat iron. So watch how I tap, 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 more, wait, make my way to the base of it. See that? Okay. Now watch me work, work my way back. Some people ask me, do you ever wear a glove, Sam? No, I don't wear a glove. If you want to wear a glove and you're afraid of burning yourself, burn yourself. Highly recommend you try all of these by working with the rhythm of how you maneuver your flat iron, your hands. Do that with no heat. Then come back, turn the heat on, then do it with heat. That way you're not going to burn yourself. 
Don't try things first with the heat on. I want you to try things first with the heat off. Now watch this. I should get something here, but watch, I get something more down here. Okay. And that's more working with a, a pin curl set. Okay. Now we talked about so many things, guys, today in terms of all of these curls and what you can do and how you do them. But I really want you to explore. It's about really investing in a pivot point mannequin. We have a pivot point mannequin that we've partnered with uh, uh, pivot point made. It's called Lydia. Order yourself a Lydia. Remember, this is Black Friday week. Remember, one of the brushes that I worked with today that I feel is important, especially going in and with texture hair, is working with an artist series brush. This is a smaller base, smaller handle, small, so I can get text. I can really get that sleek, compressed look with te highly texturized hair. And remember, guys, it's about developing your eyes. Our eye, the way we're seeing things, your taste is a journey in this industry. Your eyes, the way they see things. I've trained my eyes to see things in a different way. For me in the past, in the ages that I grew up, it was all about perfect curl, your sets and everything. Now things are a sense of looseness. So your taste will be a journey. And working with your thermal tools, you're going to find that that's a journey. 